Hello and welcome to day one of this new series. It's going to be a read aloud of The Tale of Emily Winsnap by Liz Kelser. And here we go. Can you keep a secret? Everybody has secrets, of course, but mine's different and it's kind of weird. Sometimes I even have nightmares that people will find out about it and lock me up in a zoo or a scientist laboratory. It all started in the seventh grade swim class on the first Wednesday afternoon at my new school. At my new school. I was really looking forward to it. Mom hates swimming and she always used to change the subject when I asked her why I couldn't learn. But we live on a boat, I'd say. We, act we actually do. We're surrounded by water. You're not getting me in that water, she'd reply. Just look at all the pollution. You know what it's like when the day cruises have been through here. Now stop arguing and come and help me with the vegetables. She kept, she kept me out of swimming lessons all the way through grade school saying it was unhealthy. All those bodies mixing in the same water? She'd sh shudder, that's not for us. That's not for us, thank you very much. And each time I asked her, that would be that end of discussion. But the summer before I started middle school, I finally wore her down. All right, all right, she sighed. I give in, just don't start trying to get me in there with you. I'd never been in the ocean. I'd never even had a bath. Hey, I'm not dirty or anything. I do take a shower every night, but there isn't enough room for a bathtub on the boat. So never in my life had I been totally immersed in water until the first Wednesday afternoon of seventh grade. Mom bought me a special new bag to carry my new bathing suit and towel on. Oh, and towel. On the side, it had a picture of a woman doing the crawl. I looked at the picture and dreamed about winning Olympic races with a striped racing suit and blue goggles just like hers. Only it didn't ha only it didn't happen quite like that. When we got to the pool, a man with a whistle and white shorts and a red t-shirt told the girls to go change in one of the in one room and the boys in another. I changed quickly in the corner. I didn't want anyone to see my skinny body. My legs are like sticks and they're usually covered in scabs and bruises from getting on and off the king of the sea. That's our boat. I admit it's kind of fancy. It's a kind of a fancy name for a little houseboat with moldy ropes, peeling paint, and beds the width of a ruler. Anyway, we usually just call it king. Julia Cross smiled at me as she put her clothes in her locker. I like your suit, she said. It's just plain plain black with a white stripe across the middle. I like your cap, I said, and smiled back as she squashed her hair into the tight pink swimming cap. I squeezed my ponytail into mine. I usually wear my hair loose. Mom made me put it in a scrunchie today. My hair is mousy brown and used to be short, but I'm growing it out right now. It's a bit longer, longer than shoulder length. Julia shoulder length so far. Julia and I sit next to each other sometimes. We're not best friends. Sharon Madison used to be my best friend, but she went to St. Mary's. I'm at Brightport Junior High. Julia's the only person here that I might want to be friends with, but I think she really wants to be best friends with Maddie Rushton. They hang out together between classes. I don't mind. Not really, except when I can't find my way to the cafeteria or to some of the classes and classes at those moments, it might be nice to have someone to get lost with. Brightport Junior High is about 10 times bigger than my elementary school. It's like an enormous maze of millions of boys and girls who all seem to know what they're doing. You coming, Julia? Mandy Russian stood between us with her back to me. She gave me a quick look over her shoulder, then whispered something in Julia's ear and laughed. Julia didn't look up as they passed me. Mandy lives on the pier like me, only not on a boat. Her parents run the video arcade and they got an apartment above it. We used to be pretty good friends until last year. That's when I accidentally told mom or accidentally told my mom 
who told Mandy's mom that Mandy had shown me how to win free games on the pin wizard machine. I didn't mean to get her in trouble, but, well, let's just say I'm not exactly welcome in the arcade anymore. In fact, she hasn't spoken to me since. And now, we en now we've ended up in the same swim class at Brightport Junior High. Fabulous. As if starting a new school the size of a city isn't bad enough, I finished getting ready and hurried out. Okay, listen up, 7C. The man with the whistle said he told us to call him Bob. Any of you kids totally confident swim on your own? Of course we can. We're not babies, Mandy sneered under her breath. Bob turned to face her. Okay, then do you want to start us off? Let's see what you can do. Mandy stepped toward the pool. She, wait, yes, yeah, stepped toward the pool. She stuck her thumb in her mouth. Oh, look at me. I'm a baby. I can't swim. Then she dropped herself sideways into the water, her thumb still in her mouth. She pretended to keep slipping under as she did this really over-the-top doggy paddle across the pool. Half the class was in hysterics by the time she reached the end. Bob wasn't. His face had reddened. Do you think that's funny? Get out now, he shouted. Mandy pulled herself out, of, out and grinned as she bowed to the class. That was completely out of order. Bob said as he handed her a towel. Now I'm afraid you get to sit on the side and watch the others. What? Mandy stopped grinning. That's not fair. What did I do? Bob turned his back on her. Well, we'll start again. Who's happy to swim confidently and sensibly? About three-fourths of the class raised their hands. I was desperate to get in the pool, but didn't dare put mine up. Not after that. All right, Bob nodded at them. You can get in if you want, but walk down the shallow end. He turned to the rest of us. We were lined up shivering by the side of the pool. You guys will be with me. Let's go grab some kickboards. After he turned his head away, I snuck in with the group making their way down to the shallow end. I'd never swum before, so I shouldn't have, but I couldn't help myself. I just knew I could do it. And the water looked so beautiful, lying there still and calm. As though it were holding its breath, waiting for someone to jump in and set it alive with splashes and ripples. There were five big steps that led gradually into the water. I stepped on the first one and, and warm water tickled over my toes. Another step and the water wobbled over my knees. Two more, then I pushed myself into the water. I ducked my head under the water, reaching wide with my arms. As I held my breath and swam deeper, the silence of the water surrounded me and called to me, drawing my body through its creamy calm. It through its creamy calm. It was it was as if I'd found a new home. Now that is more like it, Bob shouted when I came up for air. You're unnatural. Then he turned back to the others who were squinting and staring at me with open mouths. Mandy's eyes fired hatred at me as Bob said, That's what I'd like to see you all doing by the end of the term. But then it happened. One minute I was skimming along like a flying fish. The next my legs suddenly seized up. It felt as though somebody had glued my thighs together and strapped a splint on my shins. I tried to smile up at the teacher as I paddled to the side, but my legs had turned into a block of stone. I couldn't feel my knees, my feet, my toes. What was happening? A second later, I almost went under completely. I screamed, getting a mouthful of water. Bob shouted to everyone to stay put and dove in, dove in, in his shorts and t-shirt and swam over to me. It's my legs, I gasped. I can't feel them. He cut to my chin in his big hand and began a powerful backstroke to bring his back over to the side. Don't worry, he said. It's just a cramp. Happens to everyone. We'd reached the steps, the big steps at the side of the pool and climbed on top and climbed onto the top one. As soon as I was halfway out of the water, the weird feeling started to go away. Let's have a look at those legs, Bob lifted me up. Onto the side of the pool. Can you lift your left one? I did. And your right? Easy. Any pain? It's gone now, I said. Just a cramp then. Why don't you rest here for a few minutes? Get in again. 
when you're ready. I nodded and he went back to the others, but the truth was I felt something that he he hadn't hadn't seen and I and I'd seen something he hadn't felt and I didn't have a clue what it was, but I knew one thing for sure you for sure you wouldn't get me back in that pool for a million dollars. Uh, I sat by the side for a long time. Eventually, the whole rest of the class got in and started splashing around. Even Mandy was allowed back in, but I didn't want to sit too, too near those guys in case I got splashed and it happened again. I was even more even nervous when I went home after school. What if I fell off the pier and into the sea? The boat docks are, are all along one side of the pier. There are three other boats beside the king tied up at ours, one seriously done up white speedboat and a couple of bigger yachts. None of the other boats have people living on it though. An old plank of wood stretches across to get you from the dock to the boat. Mom used to carry me over it when I was little, but I've been doing it on my own for ages now. Only just then I somehow couldn't. couldn't. I called out to mom. I can't get across, I shouted. When she came up from below deck, she had a towel wrapped around her head and a satin robe on. I'm getting ready for book for book group. I stood frozen on the dog around me. The boats melted into a wobbly mass of mats and tackle. I stared at the king, the most ro rocked with the boat, the wooden deck, shiny sea sea spray my eyes blurred as I focused on the row of portholes along the side of the boat. The thin metal bar running around the edge i'm scared i said so mom pulled the dressing gown gown cord tighter around her waist and reached her skinny arm out to me come on sweetie let's go and i had made it across she grabbed me and gave me a hug ding bat she said ruffling my hair then she went back inside to finish up um when I had made it across, she grabbed me. Okay, mom's always going to some group or another or another. Last year it was yoga. Now it's book group. She works at the second hand bookstore on the promet promet, and that's where the group meets. It's pretty cool actually. At the store, they just open a cafe bar where you can get thick milkshakes with pieces of real fruit or big chunks of chocolate chip cookie dough. Cookie dough in them. I imagine the book group is just her latest excuse to meet up and gossip with her friends. But at least it keeps up, keeps her focus on something other than me. Miss McMillie, who does palms on the pier, comes to stay with me when mom's out. Not that I need a baby, need a babysitter at my age, but Millie's okay. Sometimes she'll practice her Riki or sh Shisatsu massage on me. She even brought her tarot card once. Apparently, they told her that I was about to achieve academic success. And win praise from all quarters. The next day, I got the lowest grade in the class on the spelling test and was given three lunch attentions to do extra study. But that's Millie for you. Luckily, Millie's two favorite shows are back to back on NBC Wednesdays. So I knew she wouldn't bother me tonight. I wanted to be left alone because I needed time to think. There were two things I knew for sure. One, I had to figure out what happened to me in the pool. And two, I need to get out of swimming lessons before it happened again. I could hear mom belting it, belting it out all the way from her cabin while I paced up and down in front in the front room. Do you, do you really love me? Do you want to stay? She was singing louder than her CD. She always sings when she gets ready, ready to go out. I don't mind too much except when she starts doing the video moves tonight. I hardly notice. I already tried asking her right when I got home if I had to go to swimming and she gone ballistic. I hope you're joking, she said in that voice. That means she isn't. After all the fuss you created and making me buy you that suit, no way you are giving up after only one lesson. I paced up to the gas stove in the corner of the saloon. That's where we call the living room. I usually get my best ideas when I pace, but nothing was coming to me tonight. I paced. I paced past the ratty old sofa with its big orange blanket. Pace, pace, left, right, creak, squeak, think, think, nothing.
excuse me. <laughs> Better tell me soon, baby. I ain't got all day. Mom's voice warbled out from her room. I tried extending my pacing to the kitchen. It's called a galley, really. It's got a sink, a tiny fridge, and a countertop that's always covered with empty cartons and bottle bottles. Mom makes us recycle everything. The galley's in the middle of the boat with the main door, a couple of wooden steps opposite. You've got to be careful on those steps when you come in because the bottom one comes loose. I usually jump down from the, the top one. I pace through the kitchen and along the courtier courtier that leads to the bathroom and leads to the bathroom and our cabins. How do I look? Mom appeared at the end of the courtier. She was wearing a new pair of Levi's and a white t-shirt with babe in sparkly rhinestone letters across the middle. I wouldn't have mine much except for the fact that she has bought me a similar shirt at the same time she got hers and it looked a lot better on her. Great. A familiar sharp tap on the roof. Stop me from saying any more. The side door opened and Mr. B Beeston poked his head through. It's only me, he called out, peering around the boat. Mr. Be Beeston's the lighthouse keeper. He comes around to see Mom all the time. He gives me the creeps. He looks at you out of the corners of his eyes when he's talking to you. Plus, his eyes are... Uh, plus, his eyes are different colors. One's blue, one's green. Mom says he's probably... He, Mom says he probably gets lonely up in the lighthouse, sitting around, looking out to sea, switching the light on and off, only having contact with people by radio. She says we only ha we have to be friendly to him. Oh, Mr. Beats Beeston, I'm just racing out to my book group. We're waiting for Millie to show up. Come in for a sec. I'll walk you down to the pier. I'll walk down to the pier with you. Mom disappeared down the corridor to get her coat as he clambered through the door. And how are we? He asked, staring sideways into my eyes. His mouth was crooked like the tie he always wore. His shirt was missing a button. His mouth was his mouth missing a tooth. I shivered. I wish mom wouldn't leave me on my own with him. Fine, thanks. He narrowed his eyes, still staring at me. Good, good. Thankfully, Millie arrived a minute later and mom and Mr. Beeston could leave. I won't be late, darling. Mom said, kissing my cheek, then wiping it with her thumb. There's meatloaf in the oven. Help yourselves. Hi, Emily. Melly looked at me intensely. For a long moment, she always does that. You're feeling anxious and confused, she said with alarming accuracy for once. I can see it in your aurora. Then she swept her black mystic Millie, mystic Millie cape over her shoulder. I put the kettle on the stove. I waved goodbye as mom and Mr. Beeston headed down the pier at the end of it. Mr. Beeston turned left to walk around the bay back to his lighthouse. The street lamps lining with promed were already on pale. Yellow spots against an orangey pink sky. Mom turned right and heated toward the bookshop. I watched until they were out of sight before joining Millie on the sofa. We had our dinner plates on our knees and laughed together as the weatherman la uh, knees and laughed together at the weatherman when he flubbed his lines. Then her favorite true crime show started and she shushed me and went all serious. I had an hour. I had cleared the place, then rooted through the pen jar and got a sheet of mom's fanciest purple writing paper from the living room cupboard and shut myself in my cabin. Uh, this is what I wrote. Dear Miss, dear Miss Partington, please can, please, can you let Emily skip swimming lessons? We have been to a doctor and he says that he, and he says she has a bad allergy and has not go near water at all ever kindness wishes mary penelope winsnap mm. i pretended to be asleep when i heard mom come in she tippy toed in my room and kissed me on the top of my head and smoothed the hair off my forehead she always does that i wish she wouldn't i hate having my bangs pushed off my forehead but i stopped myself from pushing it back until she'd gone gone i lay awake for hours i got some floor Lorescent stars and glow-in-the-dark crescents on crescent moon on my ceiling, and I looked up at them, trying to make sense of what happened. Actually, all I really wanted to think about was the silkiness of the water as I sliced through it before everything went wrong. 
I can still hear its silence pulling me, playing with me as though we shared a secret. But every time I started to lose myself to the feeling of its creamy warmth, warmth on my skin, Mandy's face broke into the picture, glaring at me. A couple times, I almost fell asleep. Then I suddenly w wake up after drifting into the panicky half dreams of my of me inside a huge tank the glass all around me they were pointing staring chanting freak 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 and freak i could never go into water again but the question would leave me alone what had happened to me in there would it happen again and no matter how much i dreaded the idea of putting myself through that terror again i would never be happy until i knew more than something was simply pulling me back to the water. It was like I didn't have a choice. I had to find out. However, however scary it might be, by the time I heard mom's gentle snores coming from her room, I was determined to get to the bottom of it and before anybody else did too. I crept out of bed and slipped into my swimsuit. It was still damped and I winced and pulled the den pulled my denim jacket over the top, then I silently climbed up into the deck and looked around. The pier was deserted. Along the promenade, guest houses and shops stood in silent row, silhouettes against the night sky. It could have it could have been a stage set. <laughs> a great full moon shone a spotlight across the sea. I felt sick as I looked at the plank of wood stretching across to the dock. Come on, come on, just a couple of steps. I clenched my teeth and my fist and tippy toed across. I ran to the pilings at the end of the pier and looked down at the, t the rope ladder stretching beneath me into the darkness of the water. The sea glinted coldly at me. I shivered in reply. Why was I doing this? I wound my fingers in my hair. I always do that when I'm trying to think if I don't feel like pacing. And then I pushed the questions and the doubts and Mandy's sneering face out of my mind. I had to, I had to do it. I had to know the truth. I buttoned on my jacket. I wasn't getting in there without it on. Holding my breath, I stepped onto the rope ladder and looked out the deserted pier. One. Sorry. Uh, pier one more. One last time. I could hear the gentle chatter of hall yards clinking against masked as I carefully made my way down into the darkness. The last step of the rope ladder was still quite distant from the water because of the tide the tide was out it's now or never i said to myself then before i had time to think another thought i pinched my nose between my thumb and forefinger forefinger and jumped i landed in the water with a heavy splash and gasped for breath as soon as i came up at first i couldn't feel anything except the freezing cold ocean what on earth was i doing then I remembered what I was there for and started kicking my legs a bit frantically at first, but seconds later the cold melted away and so did my worries. Instead of feeling calm, instead of a feeling of calm washed over me like waves, salt on my lips, hair flat against my head, I darted under the surface, cutting through the water as though I lived there. And then it happened. I swam straight back to the pier, terrified. No! I didn't want this. I changed my mind, reached out, but couldn't get a hold of the ladder. What had I done? My legs were joining together. Again, turning to stone, I g gasped and threw my arms around, uselessly clutching at nothing. Just a cramp. Just a cramp, I told myself, not daring to look as my legs disappeared altogether. But then, as rapidly as it had started, something changed. I stopped fighting it. Yeah, so my legs had joined together and fine and fine. Now they had disappeared completely. So what? It was it was good. It was right. As soon as I stopped worrying, my arms stopped flailing around everywhere. My head slipped easily below the surface. Suddenly suddenly I was an an eagle in an air, playing a dolphin gliding through the water for the sheer a pleasure of it okay this is it you might have guessed it by now or you might not it doesn't matter all that matters is that you promised never to tell anyone i had become a mermaid 
Okay, that is it for day one and chapter one. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.